Hi students, my name is Niyati Seth. Thanks for watching Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is Phylum Echinodermata. Turn your frustration into fun with your online tutor Niyati Seth. So let's proceed towards the Phylum Echinodermata. Okay. The word Echinodermata, it means no derm. Okay. Is derived from the Greek two roots echinos means spiny and derma means skin okay as I said just break the term and you'll get to know the exact meaning echino means spiny and derm means skin okay so the one which has a spiny skin is known as echinodermata the skin of most species is covered by spines warts or other projections when first seeing an echinodermata most people think the skin is tough because in many species the skin looks very tough However, like books, you don't want to judge an echinoderm by its cover as the skin in many species is surprisingly very delicate. Okay, very delicate. Just uh, contrary to this. To many people, echinodermata looks like uh, relatively simple animals and it comes as a bit of surprise to discover just how sophisticated they are. The skin of echinoderms is filled with thousands of nerves the skin and the nervous system help protect the internal skeleton which in many species consist of calcium impregnated plates okay as the animal grows the plates expand to support and shape the body the spines found in many species are attached to those plates the bodies of some species are covered by tiny pincer like organ called pedicillaria which are used in defense and to help echinoderm clean their own skin okay the other Prominent characteristic found in echinoderm are a five-part radial symmetry, distinct organ including two feet and the absence of true brain. Okay. They are triploblastic, they are silomates, adults are radially uh, trickle body part in uh, five axes as I just said. Okay. Uh, that means they have pentamerous radial symmetry. Okay and uh, uh, their larva is bilateral symmetry so you can say that echinoderm are the among most distinctive of all animal phyla okay inclusion in the phylum is uh, readily diagnosable on the basis of four synapomorphies below what are those four synapomorphies most of these features are present or can be inferred even in the earliest fossils together these uh, properties define much of what makes the functional biology of echinoderms distinctive form than that of metazoans okay next is that they have exoskeleton first uh, submorphies is that uh, they have exoskeleton that is made up of uh, calcareous that ha has plates also and uh, that structure is known as ossicles okay but they have a calcitic skeleton which is composed of many ossicles the uh, the calcitic skeleton is the biomineral matrix of echinoderm skeletons is composed of calcium carbonate and several proteins the calcite is deposited as numerous tiny crystals but all of them lie on the same crystal axis within an ossicle for this very reason ossicles are bare fringent under polarizing light okay that we will be discussing later uh, in a more elaborative form our cycles are not solid but have a sponge like microstructure called stereo that is unique to the phylum okay i repeat that ossicles are not solid but have a sponge like microstructure structure called isterium that is unique to the phylum echinodermata okay embryologically echinoderm ossicles are a true endoskeleton since they are produced by mesenchymal cells and are usually covered by epidermis functionally however the majority of ossicles act more like an exoskeleton lying just under the epidermis and enclosing most other tissues in a flexible but tough covering okay 
The second is synopmorphy property that makes distinctive phylum is a water vascular system. Okay, they have a water vascular system that performs many important functions in echinoderms, including locomotion respiration and feeding in addition most sensory neurons are located at the termini of the podia podia that is tube feet okay which are a part of this organ system the water vascular system may have evolved from simple tentacular system which are similar to those in other deuterostoma phyla okay such as tentacles of pterobranch hemicorded that we will be studying in the next section of this chapter okay However, there, there are many derived features of the water vascular system in echinoderms, including an embryological origin from left mesocell podia arranged along branches embolacra and the central circummesophageal ring. Okay? Now, now come to the nerve ring. A nerve ring encircling the mouth from which five rad radical nerves begin supplying each arm. Okay? Uh, so you can say that they have a pentaradial body organization in adults okay the adults of all extant uh, echinoderms are radially symmetrical a superficial bilateral organization has evolved twice in irregular echinoids and holothuroids but is based on an underlying five-fold organization of skeleton and most organ systems and is clearly secondary okay higher order radial symmetry has evolved on several occasions and is also clearly a secondary modification okay sexes are separate with the five pair of sex organs one pair in each arm as we know that they have pentaradial body symmetry so that means they have five arms so there uh, one pair of uh, sex organ is located in each arm of the body fertilization is usually external that is seen that uh, they are um, uh, fertilization is usually external they are free swimming larva example estrias echinus antidon cucumraria and ophiora that is brittle star okay this is the representation of a starfish okay these are the ocycles dermal ocycles these are its spine these are the five arms one two three and four five okay these are the gonads one pair of gonads that are located in each arm okay and th this is a stone canal and these are the tube feet that are located in the terminal uh, end of the tube feet okay are the eye spots and this is the ambulacral ridge hmm? and these are the sensory tentacles through which it senses okay and this is the cardiac stomach okay and these are the ampulla Now, let's uh, proceed towards the five major classes. Within their phylum, modern-day echinoderms are described in five classes. They are listed below. Starfish, it comes under the class Astroidea, Ophiroidea class, in which brittle star come, and Echinoidea, where sea urchins lie, and sea cucumbers or holothurians, and feather stars and sea lilies. So, these are the five major classes. Now, let's proceed towards the class Asteroidae. Okay. Asteroidae, though there are some notable exceptions, the pentamerous sym symmetry of C star is usually obvious. They possess five arms. Okay. The arm of the C stars are not as sharply set off from the body center as are those of brittle stars. Some C are, uh, stars are scavengers and predator while others are one or the other okay so this is the uh, uh, this is the class asteroide okay and each tapered arm has an ambulacral groove on the under surface of those arm in the furrow of the ambulacral groove is an ambulacral area okay as i have shown you just before this slide the tip of each arm bears a tube food that functions as a sensory receptacles for chemical stimuli and some have simple eye 
as you can see that this is the tip of the arm which uh, bears sensory tentacles which helps in the sensation okay so there are two or more gonads in each arm as i uh, said that they each arm contains one pair of gonads okay so this is the representation of a starfish that uh, belongs to the class asteroide okay now come to the second class that is class of rioide of uh, brittle stars come into this category brittle stars they possess long thin fragile arms that set off sharply from the center of the body which is known as central disc in most species the arms fall off is easily when the animal is under attack okay the members of this class they include a variety of suspension feeders and a species known as detrivores that feed on the dead and decaying matter and as well as predators also they are also known as serpent stars they they are so called for their long slender arms okay the arms of brittle star they are flexible and appear jointed because of the conspicuous space of the outer surface they bear a row of spines along each edge the stomach is folded into 10 folds or the sac like pouches between which lie 10 respiratory sacs that open by slits onto the oral surface okay onto the oral surface the representation of brittle star okay now come to the class echinoidea these they are echinoderms without arms they have a spiny shell the mouth located in the center of the under surface is surrounded by a thickened region that bears five pairs of short heavy tube feet and sometimes five pairs of uh, gills that are very bushy okay echino uh, dia echino dia in this sea urchin and sand dollars come into this category okay and most species are herbivore and sediment ingesters the anus is at the no within the mouth is an elaborate five-sided jaw structure uh, called aristotle lantern okay aristotle lantern is a distinguishing feature of this uh, uh, class echina of uh, phylum echinodermata okay now uh, and the anus is at the center of the aboral surface and is surrounded by a thick a thin walled area without a skeletal plates okay now this is the representation of class echinidia okay class holothuroidea sea cucumbers they uh, come to this class okay sea cucumbers aptly named aptly named sea cucumbers are the sluggish creatures that often cause a new divers to ask what are those things on the sea floors that look like cucumbers as you can see that it's looking like a cucumber they differ from other echinoderms in that they are more soft bodied and their leathery skin lacks spine but the skin of many species is covered with wart like projections as you can see that they there has it has wart like projections okay their five sided radial symmetry is only obvious if you view a cross section of a animal in the lab okay in a word or two sea cucumbers are the ocean's vacuum cleaners okay they use brush like mouth to ingest organic matter from the sediment on the sea floor okay at the one end of the sea uh, cucumbers saucer shaped body is its mouth okay which is not visible in this uh, diagram but and at the other end it's a anus okay the mouth lacks teeth but contains uh, from 8 to 30 mop like tentacles that are used to trap prey and draw it into the mouth okay in some species the tentacles also secrete a mucus nan that is used to trap Prey, okay they are long whitish stringy uh, looking fibers that extend from cervices and look like they are connected to nothing okay 
when feeding each tentacle is periodically wiped off in the esophagus to remove food and replace the mucus coating as they feed and move along the sea floor sea cucumbers often leave neat rows of excreted inorganic deposits behind them okay so uh, sea cuc uh, as you can say that sea cucumbers have an endoskeleton also just below the skin calcified structure that are usually reduced to isolated microscopic ossicles okay sea cucumbers they are very highly valued as the food source in many parts of the far east okay Commercial fishing industries they pose serious threats to sea cucumber population in many parts of the world as the catch from these fisheries is primarily shipped to markets okay now let's proceed towards the last class that is last uh, class crinoidea okay crinoid uh, crinoids uh, they are sea lilies sea lilies they come under to this class different species of crinoids they possess anywhere from 5 to 200 arms okay remember uh, i repeat they possess 5 to 200 arms around okay crinoida comes from the greek word crinon a lily and the adios that means form lily form okay they are characterized by mouth on the top surface that is surrounded by feeding arms and they have a u shaped girth and their anus is located next to the mouth okay the arms of many species are branched into small structure known as pinnules crinoids are suspension fight feeders while they lack a truly organized filter they lack plankton and a dead organic matter from the water col canal okay crinoids usually have a stem used to attach themselves to a substrate but many live attached only as a juvenile and become freely swimming as adults okay so this is the representation of uh, sea lilies okay a few uh, species of stocked crinoids have survived and scientists jokingly call them living fossils okay stocked crinoids are rare and live in water that is deeper than the sport divers explore okay at the arms of a feather stars are branched in uh, into uh, you know numerous small structures called pinnules as i have just told and each pinnule contains its numerous small feet and pinnules are also covered by sticky separation that which trap food and that is then grabbed by the tube feet at that point the arm is curled inward through the animal's mouth okay which help in the trapping of the fruit so this comes to an end in the next uh, we'll be discussing about the phylum hemichordata and so stay tuned thank you